Now, one of the key uh, techniques that we're going to use in kinematics is thinking about the um, horizontal and vertical components of the motion separately, or in general, thinking about the X and Y components of the motion separately. Um, now again, in this video, I'm assuming that you've kind of heard of horizontal and vertical components, and that you've heard of splitting something into an X and a Y component. That's usually covered very early in your course. If you've never even heard of those terms before, these videos might be a little bit difficult for you. You, you might still be able to pick it up, but they might be a little difficult. I'm assuming here people who've already been exposed a little bit to this material, but need some more help with it. All right, so I'm hoping that you've already been exposed to the idea of breaking things into components. Usually we have an X component and a Y component. Um, and we're gonna think about those separately. Well, that means that we actually don't have five variables. We have 10 variables. We have five variables for the X component. And then we're gonna need another five variables for the Y component. So let me write out the variables more carefully now. Um, since we really have an X and a Y component, it's not good enough to talk about the initial velocity. I should be talking about saying that this is the initial X velocity. I hope you can see the blackboard well enough to see that I just wrote an X subscript over here. Um, and over here, I'm gonna put an X subscript. And here I'm going to put an X subscript, because these are all just for the X component. So again, I hope you can see the blackboard well enough to see that this is now V initial X, V final X, and A sub X. Um, of course, there's no subscript on the time. We don't need a subscript for the time. That doesn't get broken down into components. Um, okay, and now how about the Y components? I'm going to go ahead now and, go ahead now and write the Y components. Maybe I'll write those a little bit bigger so you can see exactly what we're talking about here. Now, what should I call the displacement in the y direction? What symbol should we use for the displacement in the y direction? Delta y. I hope you know that this triangle is pronounced delta. This means delta y, the change in y. So notice we don't need subscripts for displacement. We kind of use a different type of symbol for the components for displacement. The x component of the displacement is just delta x, and the y component of the displacement is just delta y. But we are going to need subscripts for the other variables. So what would this look like for the y component? Well, this would be v initial y. I hope you can see what I've written. I've written a V with a little I and a little Y next to them. Now remember these are subscripts. A subscript is a little symbol that you put um, to the right and below a variable. So I've written this out larger so that uh, I'm sure that you can see it on the video now. So here's how I would write the initial velocity in the y component, the initial y component of the velocity. So we write a big V, and then, down, um, then to the right and a little bit below the line, we write I for initial and Y for um, the y component. These are what are called subscripts. Subscripts because they're written down below. And this is pronounced V sub I Y, you might say. Um, anyway, it's the initial velocity in the y component. Uh, pause the video and try to write down the other three variables in the y component. Try to write down our other three variables for the y component. I hope you gave that a shot. Next we have the final y. The final y. A sub y. A sub y. This is pronounced A sub y, the y component of the acceleration, and again, time. I'm going to write the time over here on the left. So now we have the five y variables. Time, um, the y displacement, the initial y, the final y, and um, the y component of acceleration. Uh, so these are our kinematics variables um, in the y and the x components. So it's crucial that you memorize these variables. 
Uh, I've been me mentioning that one thing I'm going to be kind of obsessive about in these videos is the signs, always writing the signs. And the other thing that we're going to be obsessive about is subscripts. Remember we just saw that a subscript um, are little letters or symbols that we put down um, and to the right of a bigger variable. Subscripts are unbelievably important in physics. Um, and one problem that a lot of beginning students have is that they're too lazy to write down the subscripts. Well, don't be lazy. Write down the full subscripts. Um, so notice that a bunch of these variables have two subscripts. This velocity here gets a subscript to show that it's final and a subscript to show that it's the x component. Uh, and we're going to really insist on always writing out all the subscripts. Uh, always writing out all the subscripts. Okay, so make sure that you memorize this exact way of writing all of these variables. Uh, remember that the displacement doesn't need subscripts because we can show directly that this is the x displacement and this is the y displacement. Displacement doesn't need subscripts. And time doesn't need subscripts because we're not breaking that into components. But all the other variables need subscripts. Velocity initial, velocity final, and acceleration, they all need subscripts. And in fact, the velocity needs two subscripts. One subscript to show whether it's initial or final, and another subscript to show whether it's the x or the y component. So don't skip on the subscripts, please. Let's use good vocabulary here, too, by the way. Um, keep in mind that this does not stand for distance. It stands for displacement. Uh, in these videos, I'm not really going to talk about the concept of distance. Um, so I'm not going to explain now what the difference is between distance and displacement. I hope that you've reviewed that in the beginning of your physics course. That's not going to be crucial, though, for these videos. Uh, but we should use good terminology. This stands for the x displacement, and this stands for the y displacement. In kinematics, we're not really going to use the concept of distance, at least not in these, vari uh, not in these videos. One thing I should point out is that, uh, for the most part, there's no reason for the x components to be the same as the y components. So the x displacement could be totally different from the y displacement. Um, but the two things that are pretty much always the same are the times. This time is going to be the same as this time over here, right? Because generally speaking, um, they're both referring to the same object moving between the same points. So generally speaking, these two times are always going to come out to be the same. So in fact, I, I think I might recommend that when you write out your 10 kinematics variables, you might as well put, uh, this is the reason why I started this list with the time, so that it could be right next to this variable over here, and that way we can easily show that these are equal. So that actually would be a good thing for a beginning student to actually write down for each problem. Don't just write down the, the 10 variables, but indicate that the time is the one thing that is definitely going to be equal on both sides. Well, this is an important connector then between these two sides. If we figure something out about if we figure the time out using the y component, we might be then able to use the time to figure something out about the x component. Or if we use the x component to figure out the time, maybe then we could use that number to figure something out about the y component. Okay, so please make sure that you have this list of 10 variables in your notes. Make sure that you're writing them precisely the way I'm writing them on the board.